Hell yeah. We got yeah, hot takes again. Hockey. What? No, I'm throwing hot takes in on top of his hockey, um, his hockey points. But are the hot takes a part of hockey, or is this hot takes hot in general? Um, they'll have something to do with hockey, I think. I don't know. I haven't thought up the hot takes yet. I'm just gonna go, you know, off the cuff here. We need someone feel, from the hip. I feel like when we say off the hip, like off the cuff, or like we're gonna free ball it. I'm pretty sure our our listeners know that's what they come to the show to listen to. It's just off the cuff stuff. Yeah. Well, that's all they're gonna get. I mean, I don't think sometimes, so. like today, I have I have some notes, but that's not about. I mean, it, it's about hockey because we actually need to talk about hockey a little bit. But it's, the banter. The, the the jib jab is always jib jab jib jab, jib jab we do have good jib jab we do have good good jib jab in going don't on. tape over your luther bandross mix though damn it already did it <laughs> or your spin what doctor's is- mix <laughs> spin doctor's mix the uh the thing you're looking for is on that spin doctor's mix <laughs> oh my god listen if what have we become up- we become just, a podcast that just yells out random shit, and then I'll say we're not even making references to "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" anymore. We're just saying things that happened on the show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If we got a Basically. junkyard cat, I feel like things would be better. But you didn't want to do that. For example, if I said keg explosion, what would you say, Shanuti? <laughs> His dick fell off. This is dick, dick fell Dennis. off. Yeah, dick was Dennis. No, um, it's, it's just it's perfectly fine. <laughs> If I It'll said be bad hamburger starts... bun, what would you say? Wait, say it again. Oh, hamburger. I know what bun. I'd say. Burger bun. Hamburger bun. I got this one right. Oh, yeah. She incorporated it in a very interesting way. Way she incorporated a bun. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's let's try another one. Um, okay. Oh fuck. Uh. Don't oh, this flush. Is all... What? Don't flush. Oh, I know this oh, his shoes. Oh, shit. You got no. a point. Well, yeah, that's good. That's two answers there. You're thinking of when Dee is living with Charlie and she has to go to the bathroom down the hall? No, 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 no. When when oh. they thought that uh, when they thought Dennis banged Dee and Dennis goes to throw up in their toilet and uh, the McPoyle says, don't flush. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. What are you guys good, good stuff there. I, yeah, that's good. I Let's thought, see. Let me get... I honestly I'm trying to think of one more here. Breaking his shoes. Now fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. Is that gonna be something from Peppa Jack and Is or that, no? It's, pro- it's the jeans. No, it was a Demaniac's copay. He was arguing with the people on the phone about. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. This man is He's this man is yelling about fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he will kill us. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, see, it's like, okay. It, it's it's okay if we know all that, but once it starts spilling over into our real life, like once Shanuti's like, guys, I have a junkyard cat that was born in a puddle of gasoline, then think we gotta take note and stop it. That's true. intervention. At least intervention. Intervention. I, I think pro- possibly the craziest thing. I mean, we we do say always sunny quotes in certain situations. Probably shouldn't be doing, but we do it anyway. It's like our. Mm-hmm. Home life and work, but yeah, if we start, if uh, if I see any of you with like a a piss can instead of you using the bathroom, then yes, we would have a problem. Or if you guys are scheming and having underage kids drink, I'm gonna have to call somebody because I can't be having that on our record. Four Corners is an establishment of higher learning. So, but don't you wait. don't you just want to go bankrupt so then the government can bail you out? Some of my best businesses. Was <laughs> we're bankrupt businesses? <laughs> what do you ask? Bernie Madoff, <laughs> hair dye. <laughs> I guess thinking about it, we all three have Sonny's posters up in our room somewhere. Shunu, you got the uh, Hitler dog. Zach, you mm-hmm. definitely have p- p- pictures over by your uh, yes, computer. I have my collage. And then I got Charlie, and I got one that Shunu gave to me, but they're not behind me. They're on the other side here. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I think that's the, the easiest thing for us when we like try to buy each other these gifts or anything like that. It's always sunny stuff. We're gonna always appreciate it. And I a, almost I I forgot if it was you, Eric or Zach, who I was telling that I was gonna buy a life size cutout of Danny DeVito, and they were gonna leave it there. And then I think Caroline, it was you because Caroline was like. Yeah, if that was in the in our living room, and I walk down, and I see it, I'd freak the fuck out. 
Yep. So, yeah. fall, fall down the stairs and shit. Yep. Catastrophic. Exactly. Funny, but catastrophic. Honestly, I would not like to see anybody like that. We can't. Danny DeVito is a natural I a nation, national icon, probably international icon. Dan yeah, had be having his cutouts, giving people parallelism. Parallelism, yeah. Can't be having that yeah. going on. Yeah. Paraliz- paralyzed, is that a thing? Is that how you say it? Paralyzed. Yeah, being, getting, no, being paralyzed. No, yeah. no aluminum monsters. <laughs> yeah. It's no paralyzed. aluminum monster. We can't do that. Definitely not. <laughs> You're talking about like it's like a like mental disorder, like it, it's like oh, this guy's, It's like how people say when you stare into the sun too long, you start going blind. You should test that one, dude. I actually blind did. Thought of it? Yeah, no, I actually did when I was a kid. When I used to be, uh, it's third, fourth grade. I used to stare into the sun all the fucking time. That's probably why my eyes are so fucked. Um, oh my god, I really I really wish you were just about to go into like the intro of the movie Pie, where he's like, once when I was six, I stared, or once when I was a kid, I stared at the sun six minutes. That's, because you, you've never seen that movie, I'm sure, I'm sure you've never seen the movie Pie. Good fucking but flick. Really good movie, but it starts with the guy saying that as a kid, he's still staring at the sun as a, yeah, staring at the sun well, now that I, kid. Now, now it's uh, intriguing to me, because it sounds like my life in a nutshell, so I'll probably watch it. Yeah, What's it could actually be part your of your life. In a yeah, uh, you you should sue actually probably. Probably based on me, those cocksuckers. <laughs> he stole my life story. He stole wow. my biopic. That movie came out twenty three fucking years ago. Yep, the Darren Aronofsky. Yep, his first yep. big movie. It just sucks because when you think of movies back in the day for us, you're like, did we really watch those movies? And you didn't think it was that long ago, but it was that long ago. Like fuck. Like, we are really old. I mean, you are really time, old. Time keeps on slipping. First of all, you're both... Into the future. Are you forgetting? Am I older than you, Eric? I'm 30. No. There you go. Well, I'm not old compared to you two, but I'm old. Yeah. Just a bunch of dudes it's being just, guys. It's just a mental state, Shinudi. Old people Is don't that... get it. I'm old people. I'm 26. It comes back to always sunny. It always comes back to always sunny. I don't care what anybody says. It has to. It has to always go back to always sunny. So, boys, welcome again to Five Holers. That was great banter. We can keep going with the banter. But I think you got some news and notes uh, there, Eric. Yeah, I do. Are we not doing doing intro? No. We're an outro We do this all the time. We are going to do outros until further notice. It's a Christmas miracle. Before we start, Zach, what is on your crotch? What? What is the thing that is on your crotch on your pants? Oh, these are later hose and sweatpants. Yeah, but what's in the middle of them? What's the graphic? My crotch or my, my shirt? Your pants in the middle, there is a graphic. God damn it. Are you serious? What, where are we going with this? There's, it's just a pattern. Oh. Little pockets. I got stuff in them. Weed? No, I got a flashlight and a knife. Ooh. No, Prepared. the reason why I asked, I thought it Hell was yeah. a funny, I thought he got funny pants on, and I thought it was a mistletoe where his dick is, and I was like, no, oh, that's uh, an idea. Patent pending. Pat, Let's pat, pat, pat trademark pat, on that pat. one. That's I love I it. Like, Good, that's pretty solid. That's a joke. That has, a, that has to exist already, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah, and if it doesn't, yeah. then, like, it, it's going to be out if there. If it in the doesn't, now. we are deleting this podcast and making yeah. it happen. We got you. That is a million like dollar cakes. idea. Yeah. That is a million dollar idea. Is that I you saw... on that research? Yep. But uh, um, I'm pretty sure they do. They like have like candy canes. We could do like candy canes, maybe for like Halloween, a jack o' lantern kind of thing. Oh, candy yeah. Corn. Or a little candy corn. Yeah, a little candy corn. Or a caramel apple. Caramel, two caramel apples. Caramel apple. Um, What is it for? Sometimes they Easter, would you got eggs. Parts. You got eggs for Easter, of course. You can do a cranberry or a canberry egg. Oh, true. Or a rabbit. A cram- yeah, a little rabbit. You can do a rabbit coming through it. Oh, perfect. Busting through. Dude, or a duck. I think ducks are known for Easter, too. Duck. I forgot. Yo. Hmm? So I found a pair, and this is some sort of high-tech underwear. 
mistletoe long leg ball hammock pouch underwear with fly. There's a pouch inside that stops the family jewels from getting crushed by the grundle. <laughs> what the dude, fuck dude. is this website? How much dude. are those? Um, twenty six dollars. Oh, we can undercut that easily. Oh, easy. you can subscribe 26? monthly though. To get a, wait, wait. to get a pair monthly. Yeah, I wonder if you can do you get, get ones each month. Do you get them like like do you, it's like ne- kind of like a reoccurring thing? Like you get a new pair, every, like a me undies sort of deal. Yeah, me undies. I really That's don't it. know. I'm gonna have to research this. Yeah, come back with it next week. We'll have we'll have a, a Christmas episode coming up, so we'll talk about right. we'll talk about fun gifts and uh, interesting Amazon stuff, I guess. No, I just think it's that's just funny as shit. Like that that we thought of this and it's I knew it was there. It had to be. I feel like Spencer there wasn't gifts. that many. There was only like three pairs out there. Really, we just got doing the best. Like, I feel exactly. like Spencer's gift would have so many different things. Yeah, yeah, you would think that Spencer's would have all that kind of shit. Dude, they have they have. They're that. falling off. They're falling off though. Dude, it's because of the internet. You gotta you gotta admit the internet really takes away from all of these different things. Like it's, it's um, true, the internet is killing malls nationwide. Yeah, except for I mean, Tyson's. I don't know. Potomac Mills is, sort of is still slow. going strong. Potomac Mills. Oh, really? Yeah, all the outlets, dude. People love that place. Oh, yeah, I've outlets, been there yes, four times in the past week and a half. That's outlets, outlets, though. Definitely outlets. It's a mall, though. It's not outlets, like because outlets, I think, there? outdoor mall. Yeah, they got they Spencer's. Spencer's. It's not on a their mall. mile it's of it. style. It's not a mall unless there's a Spencer's gifts right there. I agree. Yeah, that's true. And a Mrs. Fields pretzels and a Mrs. Fields cookies. Mrs. Fields cookies, eh? I think we should try to go to a mall and get sponsored by a mall in general, and then all the stores are sponsoring us as well. That's how it works. Yeah. Right? Instead of those random ads at the beginning, we can just make them the ads. Like they could be random ads for those stores from the mall. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, boom. Well, get on it, marketing whiz. All right, that's something I'll do. So you okay? So we need something for Eric. If you're doing the if you're doing the hammock thing with the balls, and <laughs> I'm doing um I'm doing the mall. Eric's got to do Eric. Wait, hold on, know, hold on, hold on. I'm the only one who fucking did anything this episode. I have two pages of notes. So that is what? yet you, to be proven. That is oh, yet to be proven. Hold oh, on. All right, we'll all get right. to you, sir. We'll get to you. You can make a new logo for for like with the sponsors on them. Nah, I can do that. We don't we don't want our sponsors but, getting any recognition. No, but they're supposed to see we're, we're, gonna get paid. we're an we underground get paid podcast. This is not it's, very warthog like of us. It's it's supposed to, no, it's cool. You gotta spin it. It's cool because it's so exclusive. Yeah, exactly. What? It's rare. Is this a spin doctor's mix? <laughs> Wait, so we're an exclusive podcast with exclusive rights to exclusive thing? Exclusively. Mm. Boy, that's exclusive. I'm in it. That's, I'm in. And you can take that to the bank. So we're gonna have new pairs of uh are we doing pants or underwear? For the underwear, for underwear, no, I and think, then we're gonna get I the think, malls to oh, sponsor. I think we should do pajama pants. I think we should okay. have variety. I think we should be a variety thing. We do, you, we do long, five long johns thongs for the ladies. Yeah, but what would theirs be like a taco? I mean, mistletoe would still work there. Mistletoe would still work. Would you do the duck still, or would you do like the like a, the um? Bunny coming out because that's what we were talking about for Easter. You could do a bunny coming out, yeah. Be more realistic, honestly. We'll have to take this one offline, and we have to brainstorm on this one. This is we a just, good idea. We'll, we'll start with just the, the the underwear, the boxer shorts, and the pajama pants, and we'll work from Absolutely. there. Absolutely, just no blackface. We can't do blackface again. Well, again, when when yeah. did we ever? I feel like you threw that out there real randomly. <laughs> are you, that was are you saying somebody... that we did blackface because you're brown? No, but Bill Cosby did 50 different uh, mistakes. How did now we I'm get just... to Bill Cosby? He's <laughs> throwing Now I'm going to always sunny thing. Okay. Uh, I like that the thong idea. We'll do thongs. We'll do long johns. We'll do actual briefs. Um, and we'll do pajama pants. Dumb ways. And... When you're going Why fly fishing. Fly you can fishing. go fly fishing, yeah. 
a large what percentage is, of our listenership fly fishes. What is huh. what is? I thought dumb waiters were the things like back in the day where you like put food in and you just like no. move it up. Well, that is a dumb waiter, but that's a dumb waiter. These are dumb waiters. Like you waiters. wade out. They're like overalls that have boots attached to the bottom and they're waterproof, so you can walk yeah, out in the yeah. creek and not get wet. You ever seen people fishing? Like in the no, middle of the river. I know that. I just didn't know what they were called. I was just like, I'm kind of surprised what they're called. Fishing pants. Huh. Dumb fish waiters. Fishing yeah. fish, fish pants. <laughs> yeah, we'll have that as an exclusive. Fishing pants. Fishing pants. All right. Well, that's good. I like the idea. We are, we're coming in hot this episode, actually. That banter actually did better than what I thought. We came up with some great ideas for. That, I know. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see if we even release this because we don't want the you know ideas getting out there. The only Jamoke that would take our ideas is that asshole fucking, uh, what's his name? Jeff Bezos. Fucking wants to go to the moon again, that cocksucker. Or Elon Musk. Time man of the year. Neither are five-star men, that's for sure. You see yeah, what the guy but... said? He was like, what, some guy asked him, it's like, which was harder? Starting the tech company or the car company? Of course it was the car company. I mean, that's hard as shit. You can't keep the cars running like that, you know what I mean? Do you own a car company, Shanuti? I just know cars are probably not pushing the way that they used to be, probably. Yeah. You can buy your car online. You don't have to go to the store anymore. You can yeah. go to hey, that's a, that's actually something that's funny. In, <clears throat> in the mall right here in Tyson, they have the Tesla mm-hmm. store in the mall. Yeah, we, Wait, we have hold a on. car. Do you get to a... drive around the mall for a test drive? Ooh. No. You just get to look at the car. They probably have a are the cars Are the cars inside the store? Yes. Oh, fancy! Yeah, you probably there's a simulator or some shit, but you order it um, through the store. You don't take the car out. You order it through them, and then it is delivered. No, that's fancy. No, that's just that's just you know what? quality service. Speaking of Teslas, am I the only one who's being followed around by a bunch of white Teslas? I see like three a day now, and I'm very concerned that it's some sort of yeah, Shia LaBeouf, Megan Fox type. Plot by the Decepticons <laughs> to disrupt my way of life. Wow, it's very that, possible. That, that went into a different direction than I thought it was going to go. But yeah, um, I would say it's more like the Elon Musk Grimes scenario to take over I the world. Think, personally, what I think is we're just in an area where Teslas are just prominent. I live in Woodbridge, dude. I can attest I haven't seen one Tesla in Richmond. Well, Maybe there's no Teslas in Richmond. Maybe it's just where I live. Could you imagine having yeah. to burn your own coal to produce electricity to fuel your Tesla? Could you imagine going on a road trip and there's no charging station and fucking fight? <laughs> I have to always Anyways. Been, like you get one of those hand cranked flashlights and do that until you get to where you need to go. <laughs> we're all we're all gonna be getting hot in here. Let's let's, let's not get hot. Let's not let's right. get hot about this topic now. Let's so, get you guys want to jump into some hockey here. I know we're gonna do outros, right? We're an outro mm-hmm. podcast now. Yeah, outros right. tonight. We'll get we'll get we'll get we'll get them down. We'll get our ideas down offline. Guys, come out and support us. Uh, we'll get some money going. But now it's time for Red Falcons news and notes. Thank you for the lovely intro. Yeah, I'm doing news and notes tonight. It's not sack and there's no game, so. We're going to go over a few things. We're going to start with some player news, uh, update on a few guys. We're going to move into some team news and some uh, fun COVID situations going on. And then we're going to move to the always entertaining front of house taxes and the penguin, a.k.a. Bettman. So uh, we'll just jump into it here if you guys are ready. Yep. There you go, baby. All right. We're going to start out here with Ben Bishop retires. Uh, he was recently sent down to the, to the AHL affiliate. Uh, the Dallas Stars and was brought back up to the Stars and put on long-term injury reserve. Right after that, they announced, uh, or Ben Bishop announced his retirement. He has a lingering degenerative knee issue. So this would be his last year. He's not going to play any more games for the Stars. He's just retiring up there. Um, He's played 413 games. He started 397 of those games. He has 222 wins, 128 losses, and 36 overtime losses. Uh, his career goals against average is 2.32 with a save percent percentage of 0.921 and 33 shutouts. So uh, I want to say big congrats to Ben Bishop. He's always been a pain wherever we see him. 
Mm-hmm. Usually it's over Big there. motherfucker, too. Yeah, he's huge. huge. It's, you he usually is. see him over there with the lightning. We saw him a yeah. lot that he was at the Stars for a while. But uh, congratulations to him on a long uh, you know, NHL journey, and hopefully his knee issues aren't that bad. I feel like he's one of those guys who will be around the organization for a while, at least like the game. So, 100%. 100%. Uh, yeah, I think we'll be seeing him is, here and there. Is he Canadian or is he American? Uh, good question. I looked up everything about him except for that kind of stuff. I, I can see. see him getting involved in the national program wherever he's He's, he's from. an American hockey player. Yeah, that's, I could see him yeah. get, being one of the league goalie coaches for the USA squad. But um, either way, really successful career. Um, 92% save percentages over the course of a career is nothing to scoff at. Although, you know, he didn't have his down years at the end of his career so that kind of helps yeah but at the same time he was always a pain in the ass i remember him hitting uh i don't remember who it was hitting one of our guys in the back of the head with his blocker and like he was a he was a goalie's goalie made a lot of crazy saves was great fucking playing the puck out and um he antagonized us every time we played him yeah he was just an enforcer he was just a guy that would get into people's heads in my opinion he started he started a lot of shit um between different teams i think he got not like shit as in like oh but people knew that ben bishop was going to be in there too just rattled the cages a little so yeah i think he uh he was always a force whenever you played against him as a goalie uh back there like zach said he's fucking huge he was six seven or he is six seven a little over 200 pounds so big dude with some big pads on it's gonna get a lot of that net and definitely be a force back there playing the puck and stuff but Congratulations to him. Hopefully retirement goes well. Five holders wish him the best of luck moving forward. Yeah. Go for it, baby. Let's go to another goalie here. Mark Andre the Flower Flurry has hit 500 wins. Uh, he won it in Montre- against Montreal in Montreal with a shutout. Uh, at the end of the game, the Montreal fans were uh, uh, made aware of what happened on the, the uh, fucking Jumbo what's that called? Jumbotron with the guy, the speaker. The speaker, they said it in French because I, I watched the video and I couldn't understand mm. a word of it. Mm. And uh, everyone got up. He Classy was, move. Uh, Classy move. A, yeah. There was a flurry chant going on. He is from Montreal. He is French Canadian. He played a lot of time uh, as a kid around that area. So he's, you know, pretty well known. Uh, like I said, second goalie to reach 500 wins. Uh, he was the fastest to do this feat. He joins Broder, who has 691 wins, and Patrick Waugh who has 551 wins on the list. Uh, he uh, has played 900 Wait, how many, games. How many, does, how many wins does Broder have? Broder has 691. Okay, well, so he'll, he'll end up beating Patrick Waugh. I doubt he beats Broder, though. Super. Yeah, we'll, I mean, he's on the Blackhawks, so we'll see how that goes. Um, at least for now. Uh, I think he'll be getting him traded. But anyways, yeah, Waugh has 551, so he might pass them off to see. Um the Flowers played 901 games. He started 876 of those. Like I said, 500 wins, uh, 286 losses, and 80 overtime losses. His career right now, goals against average is 2.55, and his save percentage is 0.912. And he has 69, 69 shutouts, though. So you can say so, what you will about that. No, we're a mature podcast. We wouldn't comment on that. But, um, you know, it's it's a hard thing to find a fan who hates Mark Andre Fleury, and I'm just gonna say it: I hate Mark Andre Fleury. He's pain in the ass every single time <laughs> the Washington Capitals have ever fucking played him. But he's a phenomenal goaltender. He is one of the few guys in the league who um, a team can trust to actually stop Ovi all night. There's very mm-hmm. few goaltenders out there who will stop Ovi and not let him score in the course of an evening. So he's got that going for him. And from what I've heard about him, apparently he's a real stand-up guy. So, you know, good for him. He's um he's on his way to the Hall of Fame, obviously. I mean, he's won, what, three cups now, I think? Two, three, something like that. So, and a Vesna. So, you know, he's, he's a phenomenal goaltender. It sucks he got booted to Chicago randomly for fucking peanuts. That was a consequence of consequence of Vegas not managing their cap properly and front loading the team. But at the same time, like he's a great goalie, and I think Chicago ships him to a contender at the deadline this year. So it'll be fun to watch. Right, and uh, I mean honestly, like he he's just a class act altogether. I mean, you saw what he did for Vegas, um, you saw what he did for the Penguins. 
I, I don't think there has been a teammate who said anything bad about Mark. Um, he's just going to go down as one of the greatest of our generation, to be honest. And uh, he has the weirdest smile I've ever seen. But that's besides the point. So, Yes, they have definitely an interesting looking fellow there. Yeah. I totally agree with you, all, all you guys, what you guys are saying there. He's uh, good for him. He deserves it. He deserves that those 500 wins. Uh, I'm glad he got to get it in Montreal. That was really cool. He said there's a lot of family and friends yeah, around and stuff awesome. like that. So that was awesome. Um, it was fun to see how the Blackhawks reacted and how they piled on him or jumping and cheering him on and stuff, even though he's only been there for a few months. So just another, you know, a good, happy moment in hockey, which – you know, surrounding the Blackhawks, there haven't been a lot recently, so it was nice to see. And uh, maybe they'll turn around their season here. Maybe Flurry, this will be a little kick for him, and he'll uh, be staying on his head even more so, which would be very interesting to see. Chicago's um, not going to turn it around. Chicago's going to offload their stars at the deadline. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Actually, that's probably true. That that's probably a good move. They need to do something. I don't know what it is, um, but we're not going to talk about Chicago anymore because fuck them. We're going to talk about Evander Kane. Oh, God. What now? Vander Kane suited up for the AHL. <laughs> yeah, he suited up for the AHL affiliate. Uh, and some scouts were in the stands there. Do you guys want to guess who the scouts were? I can tell you that there is one, two, three, four, five, six scouts from different, different teams who were there. All right. Can All you right. guess any of them? Okay. New York, Rain- New York Rangers. No. New Jersey uh, Devils. No. Arizona uh, Coyotes. No. San Jose Sharks. No. Seattle Kraken. East no. Virginia. West Virginia. <laughs> you know Pittsburgh is in Pennsylvania? <laughs> so, wait, do I drive through Pittsburgh, get to, to Philly? No. What? <laughs> um, so St. Louis. Louis. No. How have Minnesota. we not gotten one? This is hilarious. I don't know. Washington Minnesota. Minnesota. No, no. Uh, Dallas. N- no. Yes, what? Dallas Stars were one of them. Okay, Dallas Stars. New York one. Islanders. All right. No. We got one. We got one. All right. I'll, I'll give you the rest. It was the Bruins, the Pins, the Wings, the Predators, the Leafs, and the Stars. Why did we say the Wings? The Wings need everybody. I should have said the Wings. Fuck. I'm, in, I'm stupid for that. Sorry. I'm we surprised know. you didn't just yeah, blurt out are. Wings anyways for be like, Wings for just wings. in general. Wings. Just yeah, just, wings. It is, it's like been so buffalo long since wings. he had a Buffalo Wing. He's forgotten what Buffalo Wings Dude, are. I am shaking right now. I'm in fucking, I'm going to, I'm in a, in a state of mind that I shouldn't be. But I'm that's, what, that's what Jesus would want. Thanks, Jesus. Never forget. Never forget. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so of those teams, the Bruins, the Pens, the Wings, the Predators, the Leafs, and the Stars, all sent scouts to watch Evander Kane play. He has played two For games the- with the affiliate. He has one point, which is the assists, and two penalty minutes. Were the, uh, were the scouts just bored and, like, had some extra PTO, so they wanted to go make fun of him? I guess so. Maybe they just wanted to go to, uh, uh, you know, that area, go over to California. I think it's where they play. They're his affiliate. Um, but, yeah, what, what do you guys think is going to happen with Vander Kane? You think he's going to get picked up? I feel like with what's going on, there's going to be trust issues. Where do you guys think he lands? I think um, I think with the new – with, like, how COVID is with the different sports leagues and then NHL not being, like, obviously they're not um, – What's it called? They're not cut through. They they're not. How can I put this? They're not. They're they're really not that very. They're not very good with the protocols. Let's be honest. So, Evander Kane will get picked up from sure uh, necessity, not because they want to. If that makes sense. I think Evander Kane will be picked up and ushered, ushered outside and thrown at the back of a casino. That's who I think picks him up. Is two big scary mafia bouncers. Nice. Ocean's 12. Matt Damon and Bernie Mac. Getting it. Oh, rest in peace, Matt Bernie Damon Mac. and Bernie Mac. Yeah. The ghost of Bernie Mac. That'd be awesome. Oh, God. That uh, sounds like... Yo, wait. Hold on. That's a Christmas movie right there. Ghost the of ghost Bernie, Bernie Mac. Ghost of Bernie Mac. Just comes yeah. back and yells at you for an hour and oh, a half. Oh, shit. I'm, I am totally watching the Bernie Mac uh, show Christmas episodes tomorrow. They're so fucking funny. We ha- we've Just had Bernie Mac ideas. in general. Just Bernie oh, Mac yeah. in general. This is Classic. a pro Bernie Mac podcast. Hell yeah. No, hundred percent. Bernie the yeah. Bernie Mac show was my TV was like my my favorite TV show for a long, long time. It holds up too. It definitely holds up. I'm rewatching that shit. 
Mm. Yeah. He had a crush on Vanessa, so that's why. But either way, wait, <laughs> why? Now, I, I know you guys don't get it because you don't have kids, but the show is ten times funnier when you have children. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Dude, I'm sure it makes uh, how they're doing sense. different things. Yeah. Like, I, I'm gonna beat your head until the white meat shows. Like, that's, that's a good line shit. right there. That's a good. Don't make me get the belt. And he's Lord. Like, he uh, when Vanessa gets a, f- a phone, he's like, "Yeah, you're a sucker, lollipop." <laughs> And then he walks away. <laughs> I just that was one of the funniest moments. He just tells Vanessa she's a sucker, and Vanessa's like, "This is some bull." <laughs> oh, that's so All great. Right. Uh, I, I love anything with Jordan. He's he's so funny in that show. Oh yeah. He's always, he's like I can't remember what he's doing. But he's like <laughs> boobies. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, such a little perv. <laughs> he's perfect dude. He's so fucking funny. All right, guys, we got a few more news and notes things here. This one's going to be, oh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Calgary has had a COVID outbreak, and they have post- postponed is. games due to nine players and a staff member being on protocol. I have a question. So they postponed the games when they had six players and a staff member on protocol. The New York Islanders had the same amount of players and a coach on protocol at one point in time. Their games did not get postponed. Is this preferential treatment by the league? Yep. Or is this the difference? in regulations in Canada versus regulations in the United States at work, and the league is um, merely letting New York to continue to play because they want to continue to make the money. 100%, and we'll get into this a little bit. Yeah, I think it's the second part. I Neither think, one I think looks the, good I think the it's the latter there. Either way, yeah. yeah. Um, like I was saying, Calgary has uh-huh. nine players and a staff member, all vaccinated, and some have boosters. It's uh, Noah Hannafin, Milan Lucic, Sean Manahan, Elias Lindholm, Andrew Manjapan, something like that. Brad Richardson, Adam Angina. Rizika, uh, Chris Tanev, and Nikita Zadorov are all on protocol. Their next Those three are games are postponed. Very big names, yeah. Um, they had a game against Chicago on Monday, a game against Nashville on Tuesday, <laughs> a game against Toronto on Thursday. So they're all being postponed. Uh, they're joining the likes of Ottawa, who had three games postponed, and the Islanders, who had two games called off last month. So there were some games called off for yeah. uh, the Islanders. Um, uh, yeah, so there's a few. Uh, today, Barzell, the Islanders, said he has COVID. Marshan and Craig Smith, the Bruins, tested positive. Uh, Luke Shin. Wait, Mar- Marshan has COVID? Marshan, yep. So he shouldn't be anywhere near anybody because he has Rats, known Rats to lick people. Yeah, of course. Uh, more people, too. Luke Shin and uh, Juho... Lamamiko, Lamamiko, Tessa Positive from the Canucks, and also Hurricanes players Sebastian Ajo and uh, Seth Jarvis. Seth Jarvis played Sunday and tested positive after, and he did post game interviews and everything like that. And now four other people on the Hurricanes have tested positive as well. Um, yeah, like I said, Marshan Barzell, Craig Smith have all tested positive as well. There could be more games being pushed, and it could end up affecting the schedule and the interruption of the Olympics. Uh, what are your thoughts, Zach? I think you were right. I think you hit on the head with the, the ladder there, is that uh, the NHL in the U.S. doesn't really care, nor does the U.S., so uh, they let games go on and revenue keep coming in, but Canada what? is a little more iffy about things. So What I want to know is when is Rod Brindamore going to come out and beat the living fuck out of COVID? <laughs> uh, that would be one got, fight that I would love to see. He got a twenty-five thousand dollars fine for doing that. I think. Um, the, another interesting thing is that for the Caps, Nick Dowd, it was on protocol, and Trevor Van Riemsdyk, they are off of it, and they are going to be traveling to the Capitals on their two-game road trip. One is to Chicago, Chicago, and the next game is going to be in Winnipeg, but they will not be going to Winnipeg because they are not allowed to go due to them being on protocol. So I think you're right there, Zach. I think there's heavier restrictions going on in Canada. Um, so I think that's why Canada had so many games postponed, a full week of games, or Ottawa had, had them postponed. Calgary, somewhere in Canada, one of those stupid places. Well, that's how it goes, you know? That's yeah. how it goes. What, what happens, do you think, there's been players who are iffy on the, the Olympics and they say that these postponements could affect the schedule and interrupt the Olympics. Do you think yeah. players can be ended up? I mean, uh, Dave, McDavid came out today and said that if 
you know, if he goes to the Olympics and he ends up getting COVID, he'll have to stay there for like three to four weeks. And he's like, I don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, that yeah. was um, but, Oscar Lindblom, I think is who it was, said he's not going to the Olympics now because he doesn't want to deal with getting co- quarantined in China. Either way, who gives two flying fucks what Connor McDavid says? Anyone? No. The Oilers that's fans a good, don't that's care a good what Connor point. McDavid says. That's, that's true. That's a good point. But that, he's, he's, a, he's a big good point. He, I can't refute him, ever, other than that he's a big name in the NHL. About but, COVID to refute him. Yeah, or about Connor McDavid. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. A lot, a lot of COVID shit going on in the NHL. Hopefully they get that yeah. under, under wraps there. In my in my personal opinion, I mean, like the winter, the Summer Olympics went fine. I think really what's scary is because it's it's a it's winter months. Sickness is more prevalent. <laughs> And obviously, them getting stuck in China is not ideal. Really, not ideal, especially in, especially different European countries and us. Yeah. You know what it's, would be a positive if someone had to quarantine in China? Hmm. We get Nicholas Cage, national treasuring them, combined with Liam Neeson taking any, need them the same time. In the same damn time. So they're Could liberating people from China. Yep. Interesting. Caroline just showed me before we started the podcast, there's a new movie coming out with Nick Cage, and he's playing himself as Nick Cage. Mm-hmm. You guys heard of this? It's like yep. something about the massive, ta- uh, the miserable weight of having massive talent or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Nick Cage literally plays himself. It's going to be fantastic, boys. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, we'll yeah. do a review of once that comes out, of course. You know how Sounds we'll, good to me. <laughs> we'll rehash Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, we will. Why oh not? Oh my god. Uh, let's move on. We got three more note, three more little topics here. Then we're going to jump into some. Uh, you know what this podcast is really about? Always sunny. Of course. Um, but but here we go. Uh, a little bit of some some team happenings. The Canucks they have uh, hired Jim Rutherford as their team president, interim GM, taking over from Jim Benning in the interim, and they have hired Bruce Brojo, Bruce Brojo, Bruce Brojo as head coach, taking over for Travis Green. Boudreaux is currently 4-1 and one since taking over, and the chant, Bruce, there it is, has taken over Rogers Arena, everyone. Mm. Uh, Bruce Boudreaux has had some interesting times so far. He's dropped the F-bomb in his first interview as he was leaving the uh, podium, and there's a clip of him having players say, Bruce, there it is, after a game, and him saying, oh, would you stop it with that crap? Uh, I love that he's in rare form. He's like our little Dane DeVito. He is... Living life on the edge, he might as well just take the plunge. I think taking the plunge was going to coach for the Vancouver Canucks. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's bartering fringe style. Wait till he gets involved in some trades. Oh, yeah. This is international trade for him. Basically, he's importing and exporting goops from he's Canada. importing and exporting. Sludge. Oh, my God. I'd like to be the first person to congratulate the Vancouver Canucks on winning the 2022-2023 President's Trophy. That's all I have to say about Bruce being there. Yep. Yeah, I will also I echo that sentiment. It's great. I'm so glad that he uh, he's going and he's coaching again. He's he's always I'm gonna a great miss coach. I'm going to post game in DC though. He's hilarious. He he really settled into that position. I feel like on the pre and post game, even like he was in some of like the intermission stuff too, and it's hilarious. He was. They put him, it was like Alexa, uh, Alexa Landestoy and then Alan May, and like on the end of the corner table, it'd be Bruce Brujo, and he'd be like, right, it was like an old, like if Bobby Hill was like 70. I was thinking Bobby Hill too, like dressed up for Thanksgiving dinner, but stuck at the kids' table, like having people yeah. throw food at him. <laughs> yeah, I guess that just makes him Cotton Hill, basically. Hey, yeah, no. yeah yep. you got yeah. a point there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you don't know how many men Bruce Boudreaux has killed, it may be fitty. Maybe, maybe. Maybe hey, he's, fitty. He's got four wins straight in Vancouver, so he's definitely importing wins to them. So uh, hopefully he has a nice little career over there. I think he's probably just chilling. I, I feel like his lifestyle probably fits in well with Vancouver, of just, you know, the beach, the mountains, the legalized the legal marijuana. marijuana. Yeah, so... It'll be great. Congratulations to Bruce over there and, and everyone else involved. I also have some other notes here. They uh, have the Sedines will be coming in involved day to day operations. So it didn't oh. take them long to oh. be back at it. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. weren't leaving. No, of course not. Of course not. They'll go um, coach Sweden in the Olympics in like 
eight years, probably. And Sweden will win the gold medal that year. Probably. Yep. Hopefully Backstrom's there. But we'll, we'll have to Backstrom see about will that. be coaching at that point in time, more than likely. Yeah, more maybe. Than likely. Maybe. Uh, we're going to jump in here to everyone's favorite man to hate, uh, Gary, the, the Batman villain, Batman. He said the NHL salary cap will go up by $1 million next year. Baby woo! announced the Yeah, woo, oh, $1, million. $1 million. Woo! I can afford a quarter of a Garnet half away with that. Yep. What uh, an idiot. Batman also announced that the revenue for a league is looking like it's going to be over $5 billion this season. Batman also said that NHL is projecting that the yeah, players can have only cleared... spare $32 million of that towards salary. Yep, yeah, exactly. You gotta be well, I mean, fucking kidding me. Batman has to pay for all of his boats, and I'm sure he's going to be hanging out with Bezos soon enough trying to go to the moon. He's motorboating straight up. <laughs> he's <laughs> motorboating straight up. He also said that NHL players are projected to have their pandemic debt to owners to end by the 2023-2024 season, which would lead to a further increase in the cap the year after that. Uh, Shunji, go ahead and explain the pandemic debt that is owned or owed to the players by the owners or owed to, from the players to the owners. There is no explanation. What the fuck? Is, <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> Why would they give the money back? I don't fucking understand. I know. I actually, when I read Hold this, on, I was Shunji, like, what the hell are you talking about? Think about it. I want to hear what you think about it. What do you, like my, my so, opinion on it? Give so, us what a, is, a brief summary of what's going on and your thoughts on it. I feel like it's a bunch of rich yuppies just wanting the money back or because of the pandemic. Like, mm-hmm. the players didn't play. You know, I think he's wrong, but I don't know enough about pandemic debt to owners to dispute him. Yeah, you know, I didn't either until I looked it up, and basically what it was is that the NHL got loans and gave it to the owners, who in turn gave it to the players. Oh, but it's they all got one loan? big loan. Yeah, so... Apparently, the NHL didn't get their PPE loan payout, oh but now the players the have to pay back the owners, who I guess pay back the NHL in some form. Again, Wait, this could be totally so wrong, the, but... So, hold on. So, the players... No, no, no. The league borrowed money and gave it to the owners, who gave it to right. the players, and now they're telling the players they have to pay the owners back. Do the owners have to pay the league back so the league can pay the loan offer, or are the owners just going to keep this money? I have no idea. If you know that answer, listeners, and you are ta- if you're an expert on loans and debts, the pandemic just call debt. me. My phone number is five four zero no five four two two seven zero. Call me and explain it because I'd really like to know what's going on here. He really just gave out his phone number. We have yeah, like four great, listeners, though. one of which isn't even listening this week. And Gordy's gonna be like, "All right, so let me explain this real quick." <laughs> uh, yeah. So you just know, please, 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 please let us know. Yeah. It's not doxing when all all four people who are listening are family members. That's true. Or they do it themselves. <laughs> that my is doc- true. My my whole my note on this was all the everything I just said, but at the bottom I I had little notes of who who should start and where we should go with it, and it just says good luck Shinudi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that honestly it was perfect. I'll take it. <laughs> also, also I want to say uh, this is our last. Uh, the last little news topic here. I want to say good luck to the Coyotes as they were almost locked out of their stadium due to unpaid taxes to the city of Glendale. You gotta Upwards be shitting me. $1.3 million has been said to be paid back per the Coyotes to the city of Glendale. Glendale can't comment on ind- individuals' taxes, so they can't say if what they paid back or not. Glendale? Glendale City gave the Coyotes an ultimatum, ultimatum to pay or be locked out of the stadium by December 20th. The uh, NHL team, the Coyotes, attributed its delinquent payments around $1.3 million in sales tax owed to the state, with <laughs> uh, $250,000 of it owned to Glendale City, or whatever you want to call it. It was all due to a possible human error. Um, oh, my God. I think that's like when Method Man forgot to pay his taxes, and he said it was because he was high. He was, like, smoking too much. <laughs> it's like, you can't – I don't know how this works, because if a human forgot to pay their taxes as an error, they'd be in some deep shit. Coyotes were just going to get locked out of their arena, which I'm just surprised probably is going to happen this. anyways, eventually. So at some point. Here. Yo, how does could this you happen? Imagine, could you imagine if Phil Kessel showed up for practice and the doors were locked? 
Well, it would he he'd be the guy standing outside of the rink, waving his arms at all of his his, co- his other players when they drove by. It's like the rink's locked. What do we do? What do we do? Freaking the well, fuck out about it. He would definitely try the door a few times, and when I mean a few, it'd be like a, every like, like a few twenty times. million dunk, times. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Yeah, it he'd be, be a like time block. Maybe it works now. Yeah. Maybe it works now. <laughs> yeah. He's like, did my key card not work? Yeah, it just like it just goes red. He's like, did they change oh it to red? Uh, yeah, it's it's super interesting what's going on there because it's like very random. Uh, the Arizona Department of Revenue's uh, slapped an NHL organization with a tax lien on December third, which showed that the team has to pay also nearly six six thousand sixty six dollars in penalties and interest for the back taxes. Uh, like I said, they're not sure if the payment came in yet because the payment goes to the Arizona IRS, which then the Glendale officials have to ask if that payment actually came to confirm it. And when the Glendale officials made this comment, they also said that they're unsure and they're concerned the Coyotes are not going to be capable of the future payments. Uh, re- Coyotes responded by said they're probably going to leave the stadium this year anyways. The NHL has not responded, but it seems like the Coyotes could be gone from Arizona. Dude, at this well, no, point, no, no, they're no. going to go to... They're, that's not the case. They're looking at moving to Tucson. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then a different part of Arizona. Phoenix has just been bullshitting them. Honestly, they just... The, the, the Cardinals are going to get a new stadium, and the Suns will get a new stadium. It's because those teams have been, to their credit, successful, unlike the Coyotes. So the city of Arizona, using taxpayer money, has to justify it, a.k.a. why Philly got that new practice stadium. Go Birds. Go Birds. Can't have you our can't. boys twisting an ankle. Yeah. Pulling a hammy. Can't can't going on. We got to make sure that's good. It exactly. is fucking ridiculous we just did that. It it's is. funny as fuck, and we needed it. I will say the one thing that I hope is that Phil, Phil the Thrill gets out of the Glendale because he doesn't need to be a Tucson either. He needs, he needs a more stable climate for – for his body, like mm-hmm. Washington. This is all for Phil. Uh, uh, Kessel always loves a swamp, as I used to say. Honestly, he's I... practically Shrek. So <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. That's that's a good one. The Shrek I, line. Honestly, I would wear. I would get a Phil Kessel jersey if he comes to DC. Oh, well. Four Corners Radio would be buying all of us Phil Kessel jerseys. Jesus Christ, with the thirteen dollars that we made. Wait, we made thirteen dollars as a company. Oh, okay. So our podcast made like a dollar twenty-five. Probably. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, fellas. What's our EBITDA? Huh? What's our EBITDA? Our EBITDA. Yeah, you don't know what the EBITDA is. Fuck the EBITDA. It. Earnings before, earnings before, um, is this an shit. inside sales thing I can't, that I didn't know? I can't, remember, I can't remember what the I is. Earnings Coffees for closers. Income, taxes, delinquencies, and or depreciation and amortization. If you know what EBITDA means, call that phone number Zach said a few minutes ago. And just tell just call dad. Dad will explain it to you. Yeah, I'm oh, sure. Okay, your dad <laughs> sure. knows. That makes sense. All right. Um. And that's all the news that I got. I wanted to finish with our boys, the Coyotes, out there because they're having a good time. They're having fun. They're not paying their taxes. They said the president had to pay his taxes last year. Why do they have to? They're 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 good times. They're good times. So that's it. That's news and notes. I told you it was two pages. That's not bad. Did but, we actually burn through almost the entire episode without even getting to our main topic for the day? Yeah, almost. Forty. But no, I mean like. I can I can breeze through it. You guys can add your little two cents here. Do and there. it. So do it right now. Okay, so do right it. now where we are do in it. the always sunny do it. wherewithal. Do that it. They're doing. Do it. God damn it. All right, Ben Stiller. Uh, so the first episode. <laughs> the first first episode was um, it. actually a blast to the past where do they it. used to work. God damn it, Zach. We're never going to make it through this. <laughs> nope. So that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> no outros. <laughs> Your punishment. <laughs> Long story short, uh, the first episode was they took a blast from the past to when they were working at a roller rink. It was Mackin actually 
uh, Charlie, and Charlie was Max Fox. Um, and they were working for this one guy at the Roaring Ring. Um, Smokey. Dennis, Smokey. Dennis and D were just fresh out, fresh out of their freshman year of college. Sweet D was actually Sweet D. Uh, Dennis was actually working for Frank at the time, and Frank was like, hey, be on call. Um, so the funniest part of the whole episode, him saying he was being on call, saying he wants to be in there, he wants to see how he works, blah, blah, blah. He goes in, and he finds out that Frank is just banging core. That is the best part of the whole thing. Uh, and the intertwine between that was Frank didn't understand that Dennis meant business, and um, he told him, you can watch, you can sit in the corner, but don't look me directly in the eye, blah, 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 and all this shit, which was funny. Um, and then we also get Enjoy another it. D has big feet joke where she says, hey, can you tighten up my um, wheels? And she's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, what's your size? He's like, 11. We don't have 11 in women. She's like, no, 11 in men, silly. And um, so uh, Charlie, instead of tightening them, to make her look slower to her friends, he loosens them because friends don't slow you down. And um, D runs into a wall and becomes the yeah. D that we know today, who's vulgar, who is very in your face, who's calling everybody a cunt, a bitch, everything in between. Um, instead of that episode where she was portrayed as the sweetest person, oh, I don't like gross humor, blah, blah, blah. Um, Mac was wearing a nice uh, Charlotte Hornets starter jacket and jersey. He said, uh, I look yeah. fresh. He's, and then Charlie's like, at least wear the Sixers. He's like, nah, these colors look fresh. Uh, and then he tells Charlie he makes more money drug dealing. Uh, tells Charlie to come with him, show him how it's done. Charlie fucks up the old thing. Uh, they, co- they, they get away with five bags or whatever uh, Mac was selling. Mac pretends he has a gun. It turns out it's just a fucking handle, nothing on it. So... At the end, they find out that Charlie has money, uh, a lot of money, and they said, they let's buy the roller ring because they hear Smokey talking about something they had to shut down. Smokey wasn't talking about the roller ring. He was talking about a bar down the street called Patty's Pub, and they buy it. For first us. thing we they, change is the name. They said, first thing, we, we'll change the name, we'll change the decor, we'll change everything. Nothing of that happened. So that's how Patty's Pub became to be. Now, to this, uh, any thoughts, any news and notes, any notes on that? Oh, Am yeah. I the only one who wasn't who was very disappointed that it wasn't Ponderosa that Mac was selling weed to? I was very upset that it wasn't that, and I'm very upset that we didn't see Cricket or the waitress because it seems like it was in that time period where they would still be in Philly. Where, and where have... Cricket ate the horse turd? Yes. No, I think, that, I think this was like a little after that because this was like after high school, uh, college ish. So, like, it Dennis was. and D were gone. It was. And then they came back. And then it was before Crick got involved again. So, I think that, that this was a, this was the week, this was like the eye of the storm where, you know, it was all calm for a second. Everything right. was fine. Everything and then was they bought the bar. to normal. And then they bought the bar. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. So, a few things. Uh, I want to mention real quick, I Go love ahead. Charlie walking on his toes, because he said he skated to work, so he couldn't wear, <laughs> he didn't have shoes, yeah. so he walked on his toes to make it look like he was walking like a regular person. Uh, the Charlie still had his same hoodie on from 1998, when they flashed back yep. and forth. That amazing. McGregor hoodie. Um, yeah, the McGregor hoodie, amazing. And uh, also, the when <laughs> they say that D took a, bit, a header, and they just they just pass it off as Sweet D just having a concussion. She'll be fine the next day. Uh, she's not fine the next day. No. I thought I thought it was an interesting origin story of CTE. Sunny. Yeah, CTE. Yeah, but it, interesting story, interesting origin story. Like I was gonna say of of the bar. I think no, it's honestly, also further support for the fact that Charlie played hockey growing up. He yeah. crushed it skating. He was mm-hmm. yeah, four on the he floor too. Said, That's not easy. Do hot dogging at the at the snack stand. Yeah, yeah, no gum on this court. He had a lot of good little. Char- it was it was definitely a Charlie Charlie Shine sort of episode. It was yeah. Charlie centric. And he really but did he, did he, he had the fucking uh the uh, skate cleaner. The skate cleaner, yeah, yeah, has his little shines. He had what he saved up fifty seven thousand dollars. And yeah. Mac Mac put in four thousand. Didn't put it, Dennis put in five thousand for the bar. And Charlie's like, we should talk about the you know the equal shares thing. And they're like, we got sandwiches. 
He's like, oh, I'm going to check out the sandwich thing, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, fantastic. It's typical Charlie getting screwed, but goes to show yeah. that he had the most money and it, it was just, and they made him the janitor, like Frank said, the one episode. So, but manipulative. To, to the more, I thought this was funnier than that. Um, D gets replaced by a monkey. So, how it starts is um, D comes out, she starts yelling and screaming about stupid shit. Saying like, uh, "Oh, you don't want me anymore," stuff like that. Guys think it's menopause, thinking that she hit that that threshold of it. And uh, they said, "Well, we need to find a replacement." Blah blah blah. And she and, and Frank's somebody suggested a monkey could do her job, if I'm not mistaken. Frank did. Frank did. And um, we get we get fast forward after the intro to D busting into an audition, doing that performance she was doing in the beginning. Telling the guys, he's like, yeah, but that's what you need. You need a person like me. They're like, no, you're not supposed to be that person. It's like, you just went past 70 other actresses and all this different thing. He's, she's like. Uh, you're welcome. My, I, we're welcome. And your act is like, my acting coach worked with me and all this shit. Finds out that she could be an acting coach and swindle people for money. And she just goes in there, swindles people. Tell us people what they want to hear because she finds out that she's manipulative and um, she tells this girl, oh, uh, you're good, you're bad, or maybe you're not, maybe you are, blah, blah, blah. Tells people they will try to bang you to get it's for you to get your role. So <laughs> that's another part. But the main story of this whole thing is the, the boys find out that Philadelphia and Pittsburgh are in Pennsylvania together. And Charlie thinks he drives by Pittsburgh to get to Pennsylvania and Char- and Ma- Dennis and Mac are just like, what the fuck is going on? Then a monkey shows up. The monkey gives them beer. And they're they're finding out where they want to go on vacation. Uh, Charlie wants to go to Pittsburgh. All these, and uh, Dennis says, let's go to a beach. Let's go somewhere else. He's like, I'm very willing to go somewhere else. They try to do uh, kind of like a pull out of a hat situation. Uh, there's two colors, yellow and purple. Uh, yellow was obviously They're going Charlie. to Minnesota. And, and Mac, Mac's like, yes, I put purple. He's like, why would you put purple? Like, he said, uh, I, I didn't understand the question or something like that. I was confused the on the assignment. prompt. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't understand the assignment, yeah. And as this, the monkey's just handing them beer, handing them beer, handing them beer. Uh, they get super drunk. They wake up. The bar's a mess. There's shit everywhere. There's, um, there's writing everywhere. They find out that the monkey basically raped them. Um, I forgot who they said the monkey's from, Archibald something, and they're uh, like, oh, that would happen. Artie Turnbuckler or whatever, something like that? Turnbuckler, and then he, they find out he was ro- he, they were robbed, they find out that the beer only had whiskey in it, and it was nothing nothing it, new. It, yeah, it was half beer and half whiskey. Ha- it was a beer with half a bottle of whiskey in each one of them. Yep, and D, during that time, gets a call from back from the director saying, you're talking too fast, talking too slow, tell me what I have. She finds out she gets angry milk one in, an, in a show that's going to be shot in Ireland. So the boys, when they were writing, they saw that it says monkey beer fly to Greenland or something like that. Fly to green. Yeah. Fly, but, fly to the land of green and fight. I think it was. Green and fight. There you go. Whiskey beer, Island. Island. green fight island. There it is. But they race monkey and they put whiskey because they find out monkey beer is whiskey. And they're like, where is that? Oh, it's Ireland. So guess what episode's next, baby? They go to fucking Ireland. Yeah, this one ended with a to be continued, which is pretty awesome because we're gonna have at and least two more episodes. Rex is gonna be Ireland. there. It's gonna be great. Someone's gonna be there. Hopefully, Rex is on the plane, posted up. So right now, I think it's set up for a great episode. Uh, personally, I haven't seen a to be continued in a while. I think we've only had to be continues in the entire fifteen seasons that we had to always sunny. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like excited. One, so no, far. No, we had we had one on the gang gets whacked. That's the only That's time right. I remember one though. Oh, okay. I guess the da- dance like dance your ass off is not really a two part. It's like no, no. Gang gets oh. whacked. What about D as a baby? No, no, but, I don't um, think so. No, no, no. Mac and Charlie maybe the high school themselves. reunion. Kill them. Kill themselves. Yeah, that's the gang gets. That's whacked. That's the gang gets whacked. Yeah. No, when uh when they find out uh, Max's dad's coming to kill him again, and he and they, he puts a note on the door. They're living on the, the roof duster, of the bar. The duster. 
Yeah, when they lived on the roof. Oh, and he gets the wedding dress and he has to smell the um, the poppers. The poppers. poppers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a two parter. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's different. The gang gets waxed. Yep, that's a two parter yeah. as well. Yeah, so we got two of them. There you go. There's your two. No, we have one of them. Oh my! I just said the other one. God damn it! All right. <laughs> Well, this was this was fun, guys. Do you guys have anything else to add? Do it. I want to say Do one it. thing. Uh, fucking Do from it. the episode. Thanks, monkey. Do they it. they say thanks, monkey, after every beer they get, and it's amazing because it's just like such a dig at D. I love yeah. it. It's just love it. And Frank. Well, at the end of it, they say the whole thing is depressing because they realize the monkey could do their jobs. Which yeah, yeah. it's true though. It's true. The jobs yeah. are not that hard, and that bar is. Not hard to probably no. do because they and have like two. If if you guys notice in the background it, on the uh, bathroom door it says "Animal Shit House." I love it. It kept it going. Good find. I like that. I'm glad that they, they have literally it. have an animal to shit in there now too. <laughs> hey, what did you guys he think? Took a shit on the counter. What did you guys think of the monkey? It was pretty good CGI, right? Do you oh, think it was, it was a real monkey, monkey yeah. oh, with wow. CGI? Yeah, with CGI, yeah. Or do Definitely. you think it? I think some points might have been a real monkey. At some points, yes. I just I think. I think I think it was just I know from the when they walk in it's CGI, but after that, yeah. who knows? Yeah, well I don't think a monkey can pour beers like that. I don't know, they're pretty cool though. Well yeah, look into that. Good. That's what I'll look into for us. The there return of the orang Wu Tang. There you go. Ooh. Zach will look up pants, I'll look up different malls, you look up this CGI shit. Sounds good. We got our time. All right. We got our task for next week. Thank you, everybody, for rocking with us. We are the Five Holer Podcast. I am the captain of this ship, the person who will sail this to all the way from here to goddamn Asia if I fucking have to. We might go to the land of green and fight. Michael, the garbage disposal shenuti, and always to my rear, the man who will make sure that there's coal in the fucking fire, make sure that Teslas don't take over the world. Zach, the walrus, Vincent. Arr! Uh, and Jeff, the Reverend Snyder. Okay, cool. Uh, and and the man who is who is making sure that Penguin, the Joker, the Riddler, even Batman himself, not get out of line. He is blue, green, maybe not. He is red. Eric, the Red Falcon, Vincent. Thank you guys. This episode is brought to you by Smooth My Balls. Uh, get your gifts tonight. Uh, use right. the card. Use promo code 4CR20. That is the number 4. CR, the number 20. Get money off your next purchase. Christmas is right around the corner. Why not get it? Uh, that's it. Oh, cool lights. Cool lights. Ooh, got the lights going. Yep. Go ahead, Zach. Hit them with it. Why go bar down when you can hit the five hole? Aim low. Refuse to be smart. Job? Yeah, refuse to be smart. Do it. Do it.